Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. Join me this week as I take this and this into this, my concept of a grappling hook. Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. Well, thankfully summer has finally arrived, it appears, in Colorado, and it only took halfway through June for it to get here. I am an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. The items that I make each week tend to be whimsical in nature, fantastical, echoing times of a forgotten yore. Items like weapons and armor, novelties, practical items that I use on my ranch here in Colorado. And speaking of practical items, well, kind of practical items, this week I will be making a grappling hook. I'm a little bit fascinated by the grappling hook only because it's such an old antiquated item that has been used for probably tens of thousands of years, if not longer. So the question is, in my mind, is it possible to improve on the concept of a grappling hook? I would think the answer to that question is yes, but probably not by this guy, but we'll see. That said, I have a couple subtle tweaks that I wanna make to my concept of a grappling hook. So without further ado, let's get to the shop and get started. It was interesting to look at the history and, and the design of a grappling hook. Interestingly, about six years ago, I found this grappling hook buried in the ground at one of the first houses that I had purchased. The house was on what was an old walnut orchard. Someone told me that they used this hook to cast it up into the trees and then shake the trees and have all of the nuts fall down. I kind of feel like that's a bit of malarkey, but Either way, it was buried in the ground right below the culture of an old walnut tree, so who knows? I have done some research on the shape and the style of that particular hook, and it does look like it's an old, old uh, Japanese style for, for a grappling hook of sorts. So uh, I love it. I love that piece of item that I found in the ground. That said, the question for me was, should this be three-pronged, four-pronged, five-pronged? And I went with four-pronged. It just felt like it was probably the best blend of efficiency and, and accuracy when you throw it to capture. Uh, what I was, I wanted to design a grappling hook that you would hang off of, that you would use to scale something with. As in most things that I do, I want there to be, of course, some level of historical accuracy, if not function, but at the same time, I want to give it a, a interesting look to, to my design aesthetics, the things, the ideas that I have in my head that are beyond just pure function, that give it some sort of gravitas, that when a viewer looks at it, they, they're captured. They want to continue looking at it and inspect it and examine it and find out what was this for. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to make a bunch of what I call tines. They're basically going to be large spikes that I thought would be a cool idea to add on to this that would sort of create a additional capturing mechanism, if you will. And of course, it's incumbent on any good father of two little girls to make sure you take a break and capture their little dance moves. They're not very good dance moves, by my opinion, but then again, my dance moves are terrible as well, so we're even. So here's the basic layout. Now what I need to do is just do a lot of welding, a lot of grinding. Initially, I was gonna put some rivets through those tines to the main stave, if you will, but I just decided that it'd be better to weld everything together and make it pretty much as bomb-proof as possible. I was intending to test this. I don't think that it's possible to make a grappling hook for climbing and not actually put it to the test, um, which we will get to here at the end. I don't know if the fish hook barbs on the end are a good idea or a bad idea. I actually just don't know enough about really the physics and the design and the engineering that goes into this application to see if that's something that actually makes sense. In my mind's eye, it seems to make tons of sense. But the other question is, do you want a grappling hook that you throw up and over something that you're going to climb with? Do you want it to be able to be pulled off quickly? 
do you want to to release in a particular way if you jostle the rope? I don't know the answer. I think maybe the answer is whatever it is that the user would like. I'm liking the way this turned out. I, I have this leftover spike from a build that I did for a what is a spiked flail. I just decided to add that to the top because why not? All right, so I made a mistake um, and I actually wanted to show this to you before the end of the video because I'm going to make a correction and I wanted to make sure that uh, it was clear what I, what I was doing. These little barbs right here that I think are very cool, very fanciful, actually could have a detrimental effect in my opinion on the use of this grappling hook. And that is this barb right here, you want the grappling hook when it's thrown you want it to pull down and grab onto something like this. What you don't want it to do is get hooked on this barb right here and have that hook and then plunk and have this big old jolt before it, once you put your weight on it. So you, you want it to cleanly move on up and into this pocket up here or in, onto this spike. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off. I just wanted to show that. All right, so I have some old climbing rope that um, I just have laying around. I know nothing about rock climbing. I have done it uh, in the past, but I really don't know much about it. So this is probably the exact opposite of the type of rope that you want to use to try and climb with, but it's what I had. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to make the world's most efficient creative knot, and we're going to cinch that up and go out and actually try this thing. Right outside my shop, I have this little cliff face um, that I have scampered up a few times with my daughter. So great part for uh, me to go out and, and, and put this to the test. My intention was to cast this in one graceful move, throw it up to the top, have it catch immediately, scamper up the rock using it, um, but uh, clearly I'm not that good. Here we go, got the angle measured up, and then ha! Oh, no, oh, it's coming back down. I will say, I did get this right on the second throw. So it uh, just getting a little bit of added rope to that, throwing it like I meant business, uh, seemed to be what, what was in order. And hi -yah! And that one's stuck. All right, now for the other part. Get it nice and tight, and up this uh, face we're gonna go. I'm gonna use nothing but the rope. I'm gonna put all of my faith in this hook that I've created. I don't know really what's up there. Um, I do know there's probably something that it can catch on, and it caught pretty good. But upon review, when I started scampering up, the rope that I was using and gloves and my lack of confidence really just sort of came all to bear, and I started to <laughs> basically climb half on the rock half on the rope not trusting anything that was above me and which is a little bit of a bummer that said it was it was perfectly stuck in in the, the top rock it really did work quite well i just didn't trust it without having gone up and inspected it beforehand which i, I didn't do the hook held great uh, it was embedded in in a piece of boulder at the top it looked awesome um, so i'm very pleased with it all right, well, thank you for joining me for this build. Um, super simple, super fast, pretty interesting. I did set out with the somewhat arrogant notion of potentially redesigning or re-engineering the ancient tried and true grappling hook. And really what I came up with was, was, was a couple clear mistakes and a couple head scratching moments. Straight in, I think that we can all agree that across the globe for the next 10 or 15 years, climbers across the world are gonna study this knot that I did and try to figure out how I, a non-experienced non-climber could make such efficient, strong, well-held knot. Most assuredly, that is not the case. But that's okay. Uh, it, 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 it held at least long enough for me to get up that, that mountain. Okay, another design feature I wanted to draw attention to, which I don't know if this is good or bad, but in my mind's eye, it seemed to make sense. And that is this, these spurs, these prongs. My idea behind them would be for a piece of material, once it goes up inside of this, to actually get suspended or hooked in there as well, if it wanted to try to come out, that these spikes would keep a large piece of material from just slipping back out. I don't know why that would be an issue. If you're putting weight on something, why would it? Why would things just reverse and all of a sudden slip out? But who knows, odder things can happen. Maybe it's at a weird angle. Maybe it's being pulled this way and then gravity moves it. I don't know. It does seem like an interesting concept, a good idea to me. The other feature, these barbs right here, this is kind of a fish hook, right? I mean, it looks to me just like a fish hook would look with the idea of once this cinches over that it's not gonna pull out very quickly. It's not gonna just fall off. Again, 
again, I don't know if that's a good feature or a bad feature. It's just something that I put on there. This spike right here, this is really, really important. And the reason this is really important is, is because anything I make needs to just have more and more spikes on it. The more spikes, the better. That's always true. That's true when it comes to literally anything in this world. Weapons, furniture, upholstery, toothbrushes, toilet paper. Everything needs more spikes, if you ask me. Initially, I had the notion of putting rivets through each of these hooks each of these times putting rivets two rivets through so that it could be something that might be replaceable but then I thought why on earth would you design in a point of failure which would be just two rivets the heat the cold wet wear and tear could break those over time really 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 bad idea so just welding them all together is the strongest bond lastly I had looked into doing a three-sided or a three hooked grappling hook I've seen some that are five-sided I've seen I think I've even seen a few that are six-sided which just seems like a lot my thought is this and I don't have any historical analysis or anything to say this but that something between three and four hooks is probably the most efficient the more hooks you have in my opinion the more things the more things that can bounce off an item and not settle on to something final point which is one I would really like to hammer home get it hammer home and that is this anytime you take a look at something and you do it for yourself the first time redesign it in your mind recreate it by hand, whatever it is that you're doing, most likely you're going to learn a lot about your methods, your process, the mistakes that you can make. At the same time, the hope is that you start to learn about the forefathers, the makers from ages past, what their concepts were, why they did certain things, why they avoided other things. It became very clear to me that these spikes down here, once when they were protruding off, was a really bad potential design idea. So all of this comes from asking questions while you build. Why use four hooks instead of five or six or three? And then you discover for yourself that maybe some grappling hooks were meant the way I designed this to hang off of. Others might be meant to, to pull something towards you, which means that it might be moving along the ground and you wouldn't want it to get caught on something. Thank you for joining me for this project. Until next week and the next project, God bless. Have a great week.